Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I'm just gonna enjoy a little bit of snake bite while I do this tutorial. It's not really a tutorial. I mean, I guess in a way it kind of is. But basically, what I wanna talk about today is all the things that we use on our face. What each thing is, do you need it, why you need it, if you think you need it. Um, I know when I was first starting out, watching YouTube and really just becoming more familiar with makeup, I have no idea what a BB cream was or a CC cream was or a translucent powder. I mean, I've been doing my makeup, you know, since high school, but it was literally just the basics. Foundation, a little bit of powder, done deal. Um, and kind of as I started going into the YouTube world and watching more people on YouTube, I learned that there were all of these other things that I had no idea about. I didn't know what they were. I didn't know how or when to use them or what each thing did or if it was a benefit to me or what it was. It was all just so super confusing. So I wanted to make a video to talk to you today about what each thing is, what it does, and really it's up to you if it's for you. Um, it depends on the look that you're going for. If you're looking for a natural look, then you might really be interested in a BB cream or a CC cream versus a heavy foundation. Um, if you're looking for a full coverage, random hair, a full coverage look, then maybe you want all of these things. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get started. Some of them I will demonstrate how to use, what tools you may want to use, things like that. Um, I don't have anything on my face right now. I washed my face completely, got nothing on. So we're gonna get started. I do have some notes over here just in case I get a little ahead of myself or sidetracked. I can bring it back in. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is basically no matter what you wanna do to your face, whether it's light coverage, medium coverage, full coverage, you wanna start with clean, moisturized skin. That's gonna be key no matter what. So my face is completely clean, it's completely moisturized. Um, now this is a choice, you can start with a primer, um, and there's several different ones to choose from. Some of them have added benefits in them, maybe it has a mattifying, um, I guess, mattifying ingredient or a mattifying um, effect would maybe be the right word. So some of the ones that I have are the, this is a Dr. Brandt. This is a Pores No More, it's a pore refining primer. So what this is basically doing is, the point of the primer itself is to help that makeup adhere to your skin. So if it's the foundation you're putting on or BB cream or whatever it is, it will help lock that into your skin is basically the idea behind the primer. So a pores no more. Okay, so. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is the Pores No More Primer. Basically, when you're using this, you're hoping to utilize, or, wow, you're hoping to basically refine the appearance of the pores either in your T-zone, on your nose, um, so you're gonna wanna use this. This is more expensive. You do not have to buy an expensive primer. It's completely up to you. Um, I think this is probably in the 30 or so dollar range. <sighs> okay, third time's the charm. So basically, you don't need an expensive primer. This is a little bit more of a higher end product. If you're just starting out, um, you can definitely go this route if you feel like, hey, I definitely wanna try it. The good thing about purchasing something like this from like Sephora or even Ulta is you could take it back. If it doesn't work for you and you don't like it, if you're wanting to spend that amount of money just to test it out and then knowing you can take it back, do it. I say there's no harm in that. Um, another primer that I have that I did just pick up is this NYX and it's a tea tree balance. They call it a skin elixir but basically the tea tree oil is supposed to like calm down your skin, calm down the redness or any kind of like discoloration and stuff you've got going on in your skin. Um, I used this yesterday and I was actually really impressed. This was about $12 
Um, so it's a little bit on the expensive end for NYX, um, but I really like it. It smells really good, and it actually felt really good like on my skin. It had a cooling effect. Um, so this would be your drugstore, CVS. I haven't seen this particular one at Target, um, but I did pick this up at CVS. Another primer that I have is, this is the Becca, and it's a backlight priming. And basically, this will give you a glow underneath your foundation, or if you're using just a tinted moisturizer, um, this will add a little bit of glow to your skin. It's really up to you um, what you wanna add or what you're looking for. Um, there are definitely several primers out there. Um, I've used the NYX Angel Veil, um, that's a pretty good one. I've used um, the Pores No More, it's a benefit one. And I really, not Pores No More. The Pore Professional, that's the one by Benefit. I have used that one and I really like that one. That one has more of like a silicone or a texturized feel to it. So it's kind of up to you as far as what you like as far as texture, feeling. Um, I don't use the same one in particular every day. Um, I kind of have been playing around with the primers and the foundations um, because I feel like for some reason they're not working well together on my skin. And I don't know if that's maybe there's been a change in my own skin or the foundation and the primer are no longer working as well. Um, another primer that I do have and use is the Smashbox Photo Finish. And this is a clear gel primer. This is one of their like travel size. I think I got this as a free gift. Um, but I like this one too. This one works really well. This has no, it's just a clear gel. So the pores no more is more like, has a little bit of a like tan tint to it. And it has a little bit more of that silicone feeling when you put it on. Um, the Smashbox one, it's just clear and I'll just show you. So this is the Smashbox one. It's just clear. And then the Pores No More would be this tan one. You can apply this to your face using a brush. You can use your finger. Um, if you wanna use a, blend a beauty blender, you could do that too. Um, it's completely up to you. There's really no rules in makeup. Um, it's really whatever you feel. So I'll apply the Smashbox Clear Photo Finish to one side of my face and the Pores No More on the other. And I'm just gonna use my finger. You can use it in the problem area or you can use it all over your face if you choose to. And you won't really see any change in my skin when I'm using this primer. It's basically just a clear primer. And you do want to let it set for just a few seconds before you apply any foundation. So this will be the half with the photo finish and this will be the half with the pores no more. And I'm just applying it to my entire face. And like I said, you don't have to. You can apply it in your T-zone or any place where you feel is a problem area for you. They do have mattifying primers if you have oily skin. Um, there's definitely a lot of primers out there. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't think that you need a really fancy one. Um, you know, you can go with the drugstore one. You can go with a high-end primer. It's completely up to you and completely up to your taste. So I just use my finger to apply that. Um, you can use a beauty blender, which I use the Real, Tec Real Techniques sponge, um, or you can use any type of concealer or makeup brush itself. Okay, so that was kind of the gist on primers. Like I said, it's completely up to you. Um, I even picked up this one. It's by Maybelline, it's called Baby Skin. It's an instant pore eraser. So you have to figure out what are your problem areas? What are you trying to, I guess, in some sense, conceal? Um, I know that Urban Decay offers, I think they have like three or four different primers. So, like I said, you don't need a super expensive one, but you can return the products. 
obviously within reason, like don't use half of it and try to return it because that's just not going to fly. Um, but you can definitely get drugstore ones and um, they're super inexpensive. You can try out a couple. I feel like if you're out a couple of dollars from trying a drugstore product, not a big deal. Um, I don't know if you can take those products back to the drugstore. I've never tried. Um, but maybe you can. I don't know. So that's the deal on primers. I do recommend using a primer. Um, you don't have to, but I think it's a good idea. Um, if you don't use one for your face, at least if you're going to wear eyeshadow, use one for your eyelids because it's definitely going to help the staying power. Same thing with the face primer. It's there for the makeup to adhere to it, but also for the makeup to last. You know, if you're going to work and you've got a work day of maybe 8, 10, 11 hours, you want your makeup to stay on without having to reapply um, often. A touch up, that's reasonable, um, but you definitely don't want it all breaking apart on your skin during the day. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is a BB cream. Um, I actually don't use a BB cream on a daily basis, but basically this is called a beauty balm. And this is like a tinted moisturizer that usually has added benefits to you. So either an SPF is added, um, this one is like an 8-in-1 Beauty Balm Skin Clearing Perfector. So this one has salicylic acid in it. Uh, each one has something a little bit more than just your average moisturizer. Um, this one. Um, I did get the shade light medium and it's a sheer tint and this is what it looks like. And I'm going to apply this just to the half of my face that has the um, Smashbox on it. And basically it's just a tinted moisturizer so I'm just kind of rubbing that in on my face. There's not a lot of coverage and you can see you can use a foundation brush if you choose. Um, that portion is completely up to you. You don't need to. Some people are weird about textures or creams or things on their hands or not on brushes or using your hand. So that's pretty much no coverage. The only benefit I'm gaining is a light coverage and there's some acne type medications in this BB cream. Um, it's really up to you. Some people, if you have really clear skin and you don't have any like discoloration or certain like red spots or anything in your skin, it's just really perfect um, and supple looking, use a BB cream. They have SPF in it or if you're one of those people that maybe you have a few blemishes but it's not something that you're super concerned with and you don't want that heavy makeup feeling, then maybe this is for you. Um, but. It's not something that you have to use. You can definitely skip it if you're wanting to use foundation or maybe you don't want to use anything at all. You can just use a primer on your skin. Um, next up is a CC cream. So this is a cream that's basically, this one says it's a complexion corrector or a color corrector. There's something in your skin that you're looking to correct. Maybe redness, maybe you have age spots, acne, things like that. So this offers an SPF of 35 and this is a light medium CC cream and it's not something I use on the daily but basically it gives you a super, probably because I'm so white on top of it, just a really super light coverage. Um, I'm not going to put this on my skin just simply because I'm going to put foundation on the other side. So a CC cream, this was pretty cheap, um, These, the BB cream and the CC cream both were drugstore brands, um, and I think they were averaging maybe 10 to $15. Um, again, these are completely up to you. They're very, very light coverage. So if you're looking for that flawless, kind of really done up look, I wouldn't go with this unless you've got perfect skin underneath. And you can definitely use a primer, use one of these, and then build on it from there if you wanna use additional foundation or anything of that nature. Um, the only thing I will say, the order in which you use your products, you always want to put down all of your creams first, then your powders. Once you put down your powder, you should not 
do not put a cream over that because you will ruin your makeup. Um, you'll have to redo your entire face or whatever it is that you ruin by doing that. So there are your primers, your BB cream, CC cream in a nutshell. The other thing that you can use are color correctors. I don't use any color correctors and I don't have any to show you, but I will add a, a small picture in here and I will leave the information as to, usually it's a green and the green corrector, the green reduces redness, the yellow adds brightness, the red will combat dark circles or dark areas, um, the pink will, do, will cover darkness and blue veins. So really you're just using those colors to offset whatever is already going on on your face. Um, like I said, I don't use color correctors. Um, I don't know many people that do, um, but if it's something that you're interested in, like I said, I'll add a little picture and then just a little description of what each color does. Um, at this point, I would put on my color corrector now before moving on to the next step. So we've done our primer, and then if you wanna add BB cream, CC cream, color corrector, that would be your next step. Um, for me, my next step is foundation. And this is a little bit tricky because there are so many foundations out there. Um, I do have a few drugstore foundations. Okay, so now we're on to foundation. So like I was saying before, is that foundation's a little bit tricky. There are so many choices and it's finding your color. Um, it can be difficult and time consuming. If you go to Sephora, they have this thing called Color IQ, which basically they have a computer that they put up, which has a camera and they put it up to your cheek, or actually your jawline, and they can pretty much figure out what color you are and then assist you from there. Um, there are many types of foundation. So you've got your light coverage, full coverage, um, drugstore, top of the line. Sometimes there are stick foundations. There are pump foundations. It really just depends on what you're looking for, what you're comfortable with, what you wanna try out. So I recently picked up a drugstore foundation, which is this Wet n Wild, and it is the Photo Focus Foundation. And the only thing I'm not crazy about is the actual applicator. So it's pretty much like this plastic wand and the smell of this, it really, it smells like chemicals. I do like the coverage it gives me, so kind of a trade-off. Um, I am going to apply this to the side of my face where I did put the BB cream already, and I believe this is the Smashbox side. So this is a light to medium coverage foundation. Um, I think it was roughly around five-ish dollars. Um, and they have several shades to choose from. Um, I will list below how many exactly to choose from because that is a big deal. Um, you know, foundations, sometimes you have to mix multiple foundations to really find your right color. Um, so it's really great when they offer multiple colors. So this was a Wet n Wild drugstore foundation. Um, some of my older ones that I was really liking for a long period of time, one was the Urban Decay. It's the Naked Skin One and Done, and it's the Hybrid Complex Perfector. This does have SPF in it, and it was in the color medium. And so it does have a pump, and it's just, it's not my color at this point. Um, and for whatever reason, it's not working well with my primer anymore. Um, but I used to really, really enjoy wearing this, and now I'm not sure if my skin just got used to it, or like I said, there was a change in my skin, but it just wasn't working out great for me anymore. Um, but this is a good foundation, and this is more of your higher end, actually it's probably more like a mid-level um, foundation. The other one was the Urban Decay All Nighter. This claims to be waterproof, long wear, liquid foundation. This is pump. And what I found with the all-nighter in particular is it oxidizes. 
And what that means is it gets darker the longer it sits on your skin. So as you can see, this one is definitely more thick in consistency. Um, it is a full coverage and as it sits on my skin, it will start to get darker and darker and darker. So I'm actually gonna let that sit there for a few minutes um, and continue on and then I'll show you again. It was kind of turning like this orangey color on me. Not about that life. Can't have the orange. There's no reason for that. So again, this is also a mid-level cost-wise. Um, then I started getting into the Giorgio Armani. This I would say is much, much higher end. It's aiming from my mouth. What is aiming from my mouth? And now aiming from my mouth. Okay. And this is the well, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. So this is widely popular on YouTube. This is actually where I learned about this foundation because so many YouTubers it. actually use this foundation. Um, this light. is a lighter coverage foundation and I feel like when I was using it, it wasn't working as well with my primer and it would break up on my nose in that particular area and Mom. it just, it wasn't looking good. Yes. It's still not looking good. It's not looking good? What's not looking good? Your face. Oh, thank you. Good. My face is not looking good. You should turn the video off. Mm. What's wrong with my face? Oh, that is all over it. Oh, that's because I have makeup on it. Uh, I'm not kissing my cheek anymore. You're not kissing my cheek anymore? How rude. You have makeup on it? Right, so this is the Luminous Silk Foundation over here. Uh, and where did you get those? I'm not this light anymore um, now that it's summertime. I mean, I'm not tan either, don't get me wrong. But you wash those I'm off? not that white. Um, Are you going to wash your face off? Yes, when I'm all done, I'm going to wash my face off. Can can? Yeah. Can we all with that piece? No. Beep. So like Beep. I was saying, this is a much lighter coverage foundation. Beep. Um, and Beep. for whatever reason, it just wasn't working out with my skin. So it's not that it's a bad foundation. Um, it just, for whatever reason, is not suiting my knees anymore. So then I moved on to the newest. It's the Power Fabric. So this is supposed to be a more full coverage foundation than the Luminous Silk. And this has SPF 25. Luminous Silk doesn't have any SPF, SPF 25. Um, and this is the one I am currently using now. And I'll put it on this other hand. You can see the color variation there. Where this one is just slightly darker. It has a little bit thicker consistency. And so that's actually the foundation I'm gonna use today. I swear, like the dog, the kids. Yeah, I don't even know why. So I'm just gonna pump this onto my wrist right there. And I am going to use the Beauty Blender and I'm gonna place this on the other side of my face. And so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to rub these in. On one side, I'm gonna be using the Morphe foundation brush. Um, it's perfectly fine if you are more of a brush person than a beauty blender person. Um, some foundations don't respond as well depending on what you're using. Um, sometimes it's a beauty blender because in order to use it you are supposed to get it damp and sometimes I feel like the water from the beauty blender is what causes the foundation to break up. Um, I don't have it down to an exact science. I am trying to figure out what is causing my foundation to not have the appearance that I want it to have around my nose in areas like that. Um, like I said, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I don't know if it's the primer. I don't know if it's the way that I'm going about applying it. But basically, it's all just trial and error. Um, it's kind of how I feel about makeup in general. You just keep testing things until you find a combo that works, works for your skin. What works for me probably isn't gonna work for you. What works for you probably isn't gonna work for me. Um, and if it does, great. But we're all unique, our skin is unique, our needs, 
are unique. So you have to kind of play around and see what it is that you like, what gives you that look you like. So I'm taking my Real Techniques Beauty Sponge. Um, this is the cheaper version of the Beauty Blender. The original Beauty Blender runs you about 20 bucks for one. You can get four of these at Ulta, and I believe it's about $17. So I definitely think that's worth it. I feel like they last pretty much the same amount of time. Um, you can clean these. You can use um, a brush cleanser. You can use Dawn if you want. Um, it's up to you. So I'm basically just gonna take this and I'm just gonna bounce it on my face to blend in the foundation I've already put down. And I'll have to take a close look to see if I need to add more. So basically what I do for my beauty blender is I run it under water, I squeeze it, squeeze out the excess water, then take a towel and squeeze it again to kind of dry it out a little bit more. Um, you don't have to use it damp if you don't want to. The only problem you're gonna run into is if you don't use it damp, you're basically like pressing a hard ass sponge all over your face and it hurts. You can also, if you want to get fancy, you can spray some Fix Plus onto your sponge and supposedly it helps your foundation last longer. I don't know that that's necessarily true or not or if it just helps to keep the sponge moist. It's kind of one of those things that you have to decide on your own if you see a difference. So I'm just going to take a close up look and see. So I am going to add a little bit more foundation towards the top of my hairline because I feel like it needs just a little bit more coverage. So I'm just going to put it here on my wrist and just go ahead and bounce it in. Um, there are a couple tips that I've watched. I believe it's Wayne Goss and he says if you're wanting to do like a more like full coverage look that you press it into the skin and that's supposed to help it last a little bit longer. Um, like I said, it's really up to you. I didn't notice any more staying power when I did the pressing it in method, but it's completely up to you. So on this half of my face, I have the higher end, the power fabric. I always want to say paper. It's not paper. I don't know why I think it's every single time. So power fabric. This will run you about 60-ish dollars. Um, so that is pretty expensive, especially if you're not sure if you like it. But like I said before, you can take it back. The only reason I didn't take the Luminous Silk Foundation back is I feel like I've used a lot of it. I can't tell how much is left in this bottle. And maybe as time goes on, I can mix the two, make something of that. I don't know. And then on the other half of my face is the Wet n Wild which is the drugstore, and this is about five bucks. This is in the shade Shell Ivory. I did get an additional color, um, which is a little bit darker, just to see if I need to mix the two to match. Um, another tip is you can add primer, this Becca Backlight Primer, into the foundation to kind of add an extra glow to your skin. So if you wanted to use one of the other primers I spoke about earlier, you could do that, and then add this into your foundation for an added glow. Um, but like I said, that's completely up to you. So they also have stick foundations, and I'm not sure what I did with mine, but I had the Hourglass. It's a, um, it's not a mineral veil. It's the Hourglass, I think it's the Vanishing Stick. I'll leave a picture of it inserted in here. And basically, it's just one that you, like lipstick, would push up, apply to the skin. Um, I feel like it has the same amount of product as the other liquid foundations so while it's still expensive at least for that particular one you're still getting the same amount of product which I think is key especially when you are paying so much money for a foundation so these have kind of set on my skin and now you can see that this Urban Decay is noticeably a lot darker and on my skin it was giving like I said an orange tint to it so I just stopped using it because as you'll see, I add other things onto my face, which it just was looking real bad. I decided to split this video up into segments. This will be the end of part one, and part two will take place right where we left off. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.